How's it going everyone? This is Mind Blank and welcome back to my channel where I guess by now everybody's seen tests and review samples of KB Lake i7 7700K processors complete with overclocks that either hit or completely miss the golden 5 GHz number. But better overclocks is the selling point of these processors, especially since IPC compared to Skylake is anywhere between 0 and 1 to 2 percent. So the question is, will a retail 7700K i7 KB Lake be able to hit 5 GHz? Well, let's find out. So I was all giddy and happy showing you my new editing and gaming rig update for 2017 on which I've worked quite a few hours, then this happened. A retail i7 7700K came my way. Also this happened as well since I can't very well just pop it in my Haswell Z97 platform, could I? This is an ASUS ROG Strix Z270F gaming motherboard picked for its superior BIOS settings and VRM phase design along with 16GB of fast 3000MHz DDR4 from HyperX. I then proceeded to completely dismantle my new build, much to my incommensurable happiness, mm, yes, which actually only took a few seconds longer than this year transition, for real. Leaving my frustration aside, this is the complete build with the Noctua NHD15 as the cooler. This heatsink should prove to be quite enough for the 5GHz task at hand, right? Well, I'm not yet answering that. Few hours late, I mean seconds later, I had Windows installed up to date and all required drivers and testing programs are ready to go. We shall proceed then to triumph over this already stubborn looking CPU and its presumed 5 GHz wall. A quick testing here at reference just to see the vid and actual V core this chip requires for stock. And it's 1.220 volts, which is in line to what most 7700Ks run at stock, but let's not judge it beforehand. Then a quick UEFI run to start changing the settings we need for this overclock. I set most stuff on manual from their auto default, manually set the DDR speed and voltage, changed VRM power settings to allow for maximum current draw, set LLC load line calibration to level 7, although this will most likely give us negative VDROOP, and since VDROOP is negative by definition, this means load voltage will actually overshoot the manual set of 1.220 volts which I'm about to enter. Also changed all power targets to their maximum to ensure sure no throttling will bother our 7700K chip. The sensible thing to do here is to see how far we can go on this stock voltage. So I set the CPU voltage manually and tried 46 multi. Sure enough we booted and completed the run of Cinebench R15 with no issues so it was time to test 47 multi which again worked just fine. By this time I was thinking that 48 will not work on the same voltage but the chip surprised me by not only booting at 4.9 GHz, yes 4.9, but also completed several Cinebench runs with no issues on what is essentially the stock CPU voltage. A quick look at temperatures at 4.9 GHz and they look acceptable but I can already see temperatures being a problem in the future. I really don't think a Noctua NHD15 can't handle this clock speed and voltage and can definitely tell you that the culprit is not the heatsink but the glue generated gaps between the IHS and the bare die that Intel still hasn't managed to fix short of just soldering these two items Sandy Bridge style. 4.9 GHz is not 5 GHz, that's damn sure, but how awesome would it be if this chip worked with the same voltage at 5 GHz? Well, let's see. It posted and started loading Windows and loading and still loading. Pretty obvious sign that something is wrong here and we're not going to see the start screen anytime soon. So I changed the voltage in UEFI to 1.25 volts, but this was still not enough and got a hard lock in Windows. Back in the UEFI again and bumped the V core to 1.27 volts, which will overshoot to 1.285 volts during load due to the LLC setting of level 7 and negative VDROOP. Will this be enough for this retail 7700K at 5GHz? Will 5GHz even be reachable on this particular CPU? Well hot damn we are all booted up so I'm eager as heck to see if it can run Crisis, I mean Cinebench, so let's see if we hit our mark. I'll save you the suspense, it worked. We got our first 5GHz KB Lake Cinebench score of 1075 marks, isn't that just freaking awesome? It did fail the third time around so I set the vCore to 1.28V which was good for numerous no throttling Cinebench runs. Here's the 5GHz KB Lake 7700K doing its thing in Cinebench with an actual 1.297V during load. If we look at temperatures they're really not that great but judging by how transient they are, this 100% confirms it's not me, it's Intel. I'm actually more inclined to look at the average low temperatures than instantaneous ones since they're total crap and don't do either the chip or the Noctua NHD15 any justice and favors. 
However, this was not the final voltage I settled on since AVX enabled programs would crash. No blue screen or lock ops, just crashes. In order to get stable at AVX full on 5 GHz, I had to set the voltage to 1.34 volts in the UEFI, so quite a huge difference for AVX stability, but I also dropped LLC to level 6, which translates to 1.344 volts during load. It was either this or running 1.297V and AVX negative core multi offset of minus 4 which essentially just drops the frequency of the chip to 4.6GHz when AVX instructions are detected. But I settled on the full 5GHz no matter what option in the end. I also tried pushing even further obviously, but I can't get a stable 5.1GHz due to limiting thermals. I know it in my guts this can be stable at around 1.38V at 5.1GHz, but temperatures are just off the hook. And the answer is not a water loop costing 2 times more than the CPU, but an old fashioned D-lid. I wouldn't be surprised if this particular chip even manages 5.2GHz at something like 1.42V, which is still ok voltage if you can cool it properly. I know you're curious like I am as to how 5GHz i7 7700K KB Lake CPU performs. Well stay close cause I'm currently benchmarking it and will post in my next video detailed performance analysis at different clock speeds. I am to answer the following question, ok ok it's running at 5GHz but should I drop my cache to upgrade to this bad boy CPU or should I just stick it out until something else comes along? We'll be answering that in the next video, but meanwhile I want to see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing, hint hint, see you next time everybody, bye bye.